Mr. President, our national anthem closes with the lines, quote, oh say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Usually sung as a declaration, the song's author actually intended for this to be a question, because while we often take our freedom as a guarantee, it should never be taken for granted. President Ronald Reagan once said, quote, freedom is a fragile thing and it's never more than one generation away from extinction. It is not ours by way of inheritance. It must be fought for and defended constantly by each generation, for it comes only once to a people. And those in world history who have known freedom and have then lost it have never known it again. Our freedom depends on men and women who are willing to defend it, no matter what the cost. This coming weekend, we will observe Memorial Day. Started as a declaration day for the 1860s, Congress made Memorial Day a national holiday in 1968. Many people would take this day as an opportunity to cook out, go to the lake, go to the pool, be around friends. But that's not the purpose of this day. It's a time to reflect on the sacrifices that have been made for all of our freedom. Those who made the ultimate sacrifice and the honorable families they leave behind. I think we can all agree our fallen heroes deserve to be remembered for more than one day a year. That's why I introduced a resolution to designate May as Fallen Heroes Memorial Month. I appreciate my friend Congressman Dan Bishop of North Carolina for introducing this resolution in the House. I hope our colleagues will join us in passing this re resolution because there's no cause more deserving for our time and effort. Setting aside a month to recognize our fallen service members and their families instead of one day is the least we all can do. But today I would like to recognize some of Alabama's fallen soldiers who have paid freedom's high cost and the families who still grieve their absence. You know, it's estimated that more than 81,000 American soldiers who gave their lives for our country remain unidentified, unidentified since World War I. For nearly 80 years, this was the case for Alabama's own mess attendant, first class Johnny Laurie of Bessemer, Alabama. Johnny was very active at the Red Mountain Baptist Church, teaching both Sunday school and Baptist Young People's Union classes. He graduated from Dunbar High School where he competed in basketball and high jumping and track. In 1940, Johnny joined the U.S. Navy and was later assigned to serve aboard the USS Oklahoma. He was aboard the ship on the fateful day of December the 7th, 1941, when our country was attacked by Japanese aircraft. Unfortunately, Johnny was one of the 2,403 Americans who died at Pearl Harbor that day. He was awarded several medals posthumously, including a Purple Heart for paying the ultimate sacrifice. Out of the 429 crewmen aboard the ship, the Central Identification Laboratory was only able to identify 35 of the 429. This mystery seemed like it would never be solved. But in July 2019, Johnny Laurie's remains were identified and he was finally able to return to his home state of Alabama to receive a proper hero's welcome. He is now buried at the Alabama National Cemetery in Montevallo, Alabama. His brother Elmer, now 94 years old, continues to participate in memorial ceremonies to ensure the sacrifices of fallen heroes like his brother are never, ever forgotten. 
For many of our heroes, the desire to serve began at an early age. That is the case of Lance Corporal Thomas Rivers, Jr. of Hoover, Alabama. His parents and Thomas knew as a child that he wanted to be a Marine, his lifelong dream. This desire only grew throughout his life, and he was motivating, motivated in everything that he did by this thought of becoming a Marine. He struggled at first in high school until a military recruiter told him he'd need a high school diploma to enlist. Low grades were never a problem after that conversation. This was evidence in an English essay he wrote titled, Why I Want to Go into the Marines. In the essay he wrote in part, quote, I don't think I would be afraid of combat and would be proud to fight for my country. He went on to say, quote, I believe that joining the Marines would be a great experience for me because it will teach me to rely on God to make it through. Thomas joined the Marines as soon as he graduated from Briarwood Christian School in 2007. After completing training at Camp Lejeune, he deployed to Iraq and then to Afghanistan. His faith never wavered, despite the intense conditions of combat he was in almost daily. He and one of his friends again uh, at one night began a Bible study while deployed, leaning on passages of the Bible for comfort. Corporal Rivers was killed by an IED explosion at the age of 22. His mother Sharon spoke about how he never, how she never really got to know the fine young man she raised as he, as he grew to be an adult. Between deployments, he was unable to spend much time at home. Despite the devastating loss, Sharon and her husband Tom find comfort in their faith and the belief that lives were changed through their son's story. After Thomas passing, Sharon began to, a nonprofit that sent care packages to soldiers on the front lines of battle because she remembered how much Thomas loved receiving things from home. Through her efforts, she was able to send more than 5,000 care packages to soldiers overseas over an eight-year span. Sharon's reminder to us is that for families like hers, Memorial Day isn't a happy holiday or just another day at the pool or cooking out. It's a day to remember heroes like her son, Thomas, who answered the call to serve and courageously laid down his life for ours. You know, President Franklin Roosevelt once said, quote, those who have long enjoyed such privileges as we enjoy forget in time that men have died to win them. May we as Americans be a nation that remembers the sacrifices made for the many freedoms that we all enjoy, not just on Memorial Day, but every day of the year. May we never forget those like Johnny Laurie or Thomas Rivers who didn't allow freedom to die on their watch. And may we hold our families near to our hearts as we go into this Memorial Day weekend. Mr. President, I yield the floor.